Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Welcome to episode 9 in our quick progression series. Today, we are going to be making a big increase in the amount of science that we're collecting. So we're just going to jump in and we're going to upgrade our research and development centre. Now, this is a pretty hefty cost with over 650000 in funds to do this. This also gives us the great ability to actually grab surface samples on any body we land on, so that's great too. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to unlock as many science units as we possibly can. This is going to be a real big mission in terms of science delivery. So we're going to do a few things here. First of all, we're going to unlock our advanced electrics tier in our science tree, which is going to give us much better solar panels and a, an extra battery here. And we're also going to unlock our electrics tier that's going to give us our seismic accelerometer unit for extra science along with our new communication antenna. But more importantly, the pièce de résistance, the mobile processing lab. This wonderful unit lets us multiply our science on site and transmit it back to Kerbin. Just looking down the track at the GravMax gravity science unit here, which will be a great thing to unlock as soon as we can. So we'll just leave our research and development centre for the moment. So we're just going to go into mission control and we're going to open up a few new missions. So we're going to grab this one here, space data from science data from space around the Moon. We're also going to grab uh, science data from around Kerbin. If you ever see these, these are really easy to pick up on the way to any mission. And remember as well, we've still got our flyby minimus mission from our last episode. So just jumping into our vehicle assembly building. And we're going to modify our craft from, uh, from Mission 8, our Moon lander. So we'll just rename it quickly, Mission 9. Save that. That way we're not going to accidentally overwrite our uh, our last save. So, it's going to modify the top of this. We'll just remove all the unnecessary components. We're not going to need our crew cabins for this one. We're also not going to need two science junior units. We only need one for this mission. We can actually reset this over and over again with our mobile processing lab. So we only need one. So I'm going to get rid of these solar panels on the top. We won't need those. We're going to add our new solar panels here shortly. And just trying to grab those old struts. Get lost there, struts. Move that down. Now we want to grab our our uh, mobile lab. This is the most core component of this entire mission, so we need that. Just open up the service bay there. And we'll strip out these old batteries. We'll put some more powerful ones on, I think. We're just going to add a small inline reaction wheel here to supplement the reaction wheel inside our MK1 command pod. This is just going to give us a better ability to turn our vessel as we're uh, maneuvering around space. I'm also going to grab our new accelerometer here. I'm going to uh, do this as a symmetry 4, drop these in next to the rest of our science equipment. Perfect, and we'll close that up. We're done with that for the moment. Now, this uh, vessel isn't coming back into land. So we we don't need a heat shield. We've already removed that. Uh, and we're now going to uh, to add our bigger solar panels. It's going to give us much more power. And these solar panels also will rotate to meet the direction of the sun where possible. So we're actually going to place eight of these. We'll have the four on the bottom, and then I'm slightly offsetting the angle, and we're going to put four on the top, just uh, just sitting here on top of the science junior unit. And we'll get rid of the old antenna. We're also going to get rid of our old parachutes there. We don't need any of this. We're going to just add these couple of circular batteries. Now these batteries actually hold 200 capacity each as opposed to the old smaller ones which were 100 so the two of these is the same amount of power as we had before. So now we're going to uh, just add the new communications antenna, the Communitron 8888 to transmit science. Now you can press the ALT key to actually make it snap to the center. This can be really handy. Some parts just like to whack themselves in a symmetry mode and it's really hard to adjust unless you press the ALT key. And that looks that, that's looking pretty good now. Now you can see here we've got our pilot Jeb in there. We're going to get him out of there. We're actually going to send a new pilot. 
Um, one of the ones that we did our earlier rescue, we'll send Kimlin, I think, on this one. And we're going to take our two scientists as well, who we were lucky enough to rescue from Curb and Orbit here in one of the previous episodes. Now, we're going to do a bit of a trick here. You don't actually get to unlock custom action groups until later. But what we can do is we can actually use the abort action group or any of the other action groups if you feel so inclined. We can actually put special actions on the abort action group. And because we're not using it, we're going to set this to toggle the solar panels on and off. Now, normally you can't do this until you unlock action groups, but by using the, the abort um, action group, we can actually toggle it regardless of whether we've unlocked it or not. Now, action groups are really good because you can deploy all sorts of things at the same time without having to individually right-click and say deploy, deploy, deploy. You can actually do them all in one hit. And you can see if we hit abort, outcome all our solar panels. Magic. And then if we hit abort again, they all come back in. Now, of course, if you had any abort systems attached, this would be a terrible idea. So you don't want to do that. But for this case, seems though we haven't unlocked those things yet, this is going to be great. So just going through our typical launch phase here, just dropping stage one. Now the mobile lab is actually quite heavy, it's three and a half tons, so it does take a little bit of extra fuel to get us up into orbit. Stage two. Now the mobile processing lab actually generates science from experiment results. It lets you store unlimited experiments and it allows the reuse of your mystery goo units and your science junior unit. You can just basically right click your mobile lab and tell it to clean all experiments and off you go again. The main benefit though is the massive amount of science that the lab can process. Take the example of a biome on Minimus. You would normally, with a material study, take home around 112 science. If you process that science in the lab, you'll get around 770 and that's on top of the 112. So we'll just bring out our solar panels here. And we're going to do a temperature scan and hit our yellow button here, which is process in the lab. Now that's 45 science right there. So we'll just drop this stage of our rocket. Now we'll just log our temperature again and we'll actually transmit it back. Even though there's no science to actually transmit back, this will still complete our mission. We don't actually have to transmit any science of value to complete our science around Kerbin mission. So that was a really easy way to make 17,000 in funds. And we're actually able to do the same thing at the MUNS orbit. So we're just going to circularise our orbit around Kerbin here. Now all that science that's going into our material base, so that 45 science we just collected, that actually has to be processed over time before it can be transmitted back to Kerbin. So there is a large wait time there, it's not instant science. So we're going to uh, set our MUN as the target. Obviously we're going to do the similar steps as we've done before. We're going to adjust our, uh, our inclination to meet the MUN's inclination using our ascending node. Just doing an anti-normal, a slight anti-normal burn here, just to bring this as close as possible. If you're within 0 0.0, uh, 0.1 or 0.2 percent, that's that's fine. So we're focusing in here, and you'll see we're just trying to get our encounter just so that we're going to impact on the Mun itself, on the Mun body. Now, why in the hell are we going to do that? You might ask. Well. We actually don't want to leave space junk around, so this stage that we're currently burning, we want that to detach and crash into the MUN without leaving debris. And this is of course going to mean less space junk for us to clean up. So we're just doing a burn. Just time accelerating this here obviously, and you can see we've now run out of fuel in our stage. So this is not overly ideal, we would have preferred to have made it all the way to the MUN with this tank so we didn't have to uh, do anything strange, but what we're going to do is alt-click our tanks to transfer some fuel from our upper stage to our lower stage. And this is just so that we can complete this manoeuvre to the MUN and get rid of this garbage. So you can see at our upper stage here we've got a full tank remaining and we've got an empty tank down here, so we're just going to alt-click both of those and transfer a little bit of fuel in. And we'll just hit stop on that. That's, that should be plenty. We didn't need much, just a little. Now we can complete our burn just to get us to that MUN impact. Now, of course, you don't have to clean up all your space debris. You can just go into tracking station and just remove it from the tracking station. But in real life, of course, you've got to try to clean up yourself. And that's the big issue that we have in real life at the moment. We've got junk everywhere. Just a few seconds left and completing our burn. 
Now if we focus view there, you'll see that we've got a collision with the MUN now, so that's perfect, that's, uh, that's all we need to do. And this is excellent, what we're going to do now is just transfer the remaining fuel backwards back into our tank, we didn't need to spend it all. So we've still got most of our fuel in this last stage. Now we're going to decouple this empty stage. What's going to happen is this empty stage is going to impact uh, impact the MUN. But what we're going to do is slightly adjust our trajectory so that we actually end up in a MUN orbit instead of impacting on it. Whoops, wrong button. Just turning on the light so that we can see our core stage slowly floating away there. We actually need to get out of the way of it so that we don't impact it as we're changing our course. We're just going to do a slight adjustment to our trajectory here. We'll just focus back on the MUN. Whoop, wrong way. We actually want to turn retrograde. Whoops. Whoops. Always check. So we just want to do a slight, slight retrograde burn, just a few metres per second. And that's going to bring us into a proper flyby. Perfect. Now there's quite a few other things you could do with space debris. You can actually shoot it out into a solar orbit. You could actually make it return back and burn up in the atmosphere of Kerbin or any other body. But generally it's just easier to make an impact on the body that you're actually going to encounter. So now that we've got a flyby set up here, you can see here the purple orbit is actually going to be our orbit once we leave the MUN's influence. Now what you'll see here is we'll end up in a much higher orbit around Kerbin, and we're going to slingshot around the MUN to actually save ourselves from fuel in order to get to Minimus later on. And we'll just switch to our debris here, and you can see we've we've got no apart from our piece of debris from mission eight, we have no debris left because the debris that was following us has already impacted with the MUN. Actually, we also do have our uh, our crew capsule there from our last rescue as well. So we're just going to warp into our periapsis of the MUN here, and we're just going to start grabbing some science to place in our mobile processing lab. So just grabbing a material based study here and you can see that we can add 280 science just by processing this data in the lab. Now this is science we've already collected and returned to Kerbin before. So we're just going to grab a temperature scan, you can see here we can transfer 90 science into our lab. We'll just transmit some empty science so we can complete our science from around the MUN mission. 135 science for our lab from the pressure data scan. We also had some science to transmit back there for that pressure data reading as well, so that's great and another 110 science from our mystery goo unit for the lab as well. Now we can just do a crew report and there's another 55 science that we can store in our lab from that. We'll also do an EVA. We can keep this experiment just because there's no science here to retrieve, we can still actually process this in our lab. So you can see there that's another 90 science. Now the data you see on these readings, so 18 in this example, slowly fills up our data and our lab has got a limit of 750 data that it can keep at any one time. So the reason this isn't returning to Kerbin is because it's going to be out here processing science for many years. We've completed our science data from space around the MUN contract just by doing that little piece as well. So just getting back to our mobile processing lab capabilities. As of version 1.1, experiments are processed into the data instantly. There's no electricity used to do that anymore, so that's great. We'll focus on Minimus, and we're going to do the usual thing here. We're going to adjust our inclination. Now, our Minimus orbit here is out by about 4.5 degrees, so we just need to adjust that. We just have to do a small burn to adjust this, and because we're so far out from Kerbin now, just a slight change in our velocity makes a big difference. Just doing a normal burn here because we were on our descending node this time. So that's got our inclination about right. Now we're just going to move around to our apoapsis here. And we're just going to circularise our orbit so that we can set ourselves up for an easy encounter with Minimus. So yet again a very small burn here. And we'll just circularise that right up. Now we're going to leave this episode here, but before we do go, we're just going to explain a little bit about the importance of having scientists that are actually level 1, level 2, level 3. 
Now, as I touched on before, it does take a while to actually process lab results and, uh, and get them ready to be transmitted back to Kerbin. Now, that can actually be many days. Now, to give you a bit of an idea, a scientist that's level one can research five times the speed in the lab than one that actually has a level zero. A level two scientist can do nine times the speed. Level three can do 13 times the speed level 4, 17 times the speed, and level 5, 21 times the speed. So if you're able to get a few scientists together that are level 3, 4, 5, you can process lab results extremely quickly. So in the next episode, we're going to land on Minimus, we're going to take some science, and we're going to play around a little bit more with this mobile lab. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have any questions for me, please do whack them in the comments below. Thanks very much to all of you who have subscribed, and for those who haven't, please do subscribe to see more. Let me know that you're enjoying the content I'm making. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. Um, this is actually going to be pretty tight. We need to back our as as we're as we're losing velocity. We need to slow down our thrust, otherwise we're going to overshoot this. So just a slight velocity change. Our retrograde mark is going to help there, and touchdown. That was actually pretty pretty perfect.